Hi, YouTube Stitchers. I would like to uh, introduce myself. My name is Christine, and um, on online I'm known as, my screen name is usually Calico, and you're going to figure it out rather quickly that I love birds. So, but anyway, I can get started back. Um, I am going to do the cross stitch tag at some point, so I can give you a little bit more background of me, but I have a lot of finished projects that I kind of wanted to show, so I, I'm going to just dedicate this video to my finished projects. My sister-in-law used to cross stitch and I saw her doing it and I, I don't really remember how exactly I got started. I just know she did it and next thing I know I was doing it and, and I jumped in and picked up a nice leaflet from Leisure Arts and it was called uh, A Year of Quilts. I can't remember, or A Year in Quilts, something like that. I can't remember who the designer was. But anyway, this was my first one. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, there we go. Let me hold it up so you can see it. See, it had a lot of detail in it, and I just think it really was beautiful. So I, I did actually have it framed and hanging in my kitchen for a while, and I framed it myself, and then it was, I found it in a box. I mean, it really wasn't framed nicely at all, and it had a bunch of yellow stains on it, and, you know, when I dug it out, and so I washed it really good and pressed it, and I haven't reframed it again. But I do remember thinking at the time when I bought this that, oh, you know, I'll stitch one of these a month and by the end of the year I'll have 12 neat quilted cross-stitch projects. And I remember being really overwhelmed with how long it took to do this. I, long story short, I quit cross-stitching again until 2010. So, you know, there was like an 8 to 10 year, I just don't know when I did this, but there was like an 8 to 10 year span where I didn't do any cross-stitching at all. So anyway. This one, fast forward eight to 10 years, and I was got this urge to cross stitch again one afternoon. I think it was in July. And I went to it's either Michael's or Hobby Lobby or, or Joann's and to look for a cross stitch kit. And I came across a cross stitch kit with birds in it. And now, another quick dig digression back a little. In 2009, I was doing a a challenge. It was a photography challenge going around. And I think it still goes around. It's called Project 365, where you take a photo a day, every day for a year. And it's supposed to, you know, just kind of be a, like a photo journal of your life. And so I did it. And I think it was about in April or so, I was just out in the yard looking for something to take a picture of. And this bird landed on my yard, in my in the grass. And I had my zoom lens focused in on it. And and keep in mind, I knew nothing about birds. I never cared about birds. Nothing. They just they were things that flew in the air, and you heard them chirp once in a while, and that was that was the extent of it. So anyway, I took this picture of this bird, and I saw it up close, and I showed my husband. And I said, "Look at this bird I took a picture of," and he said, "Oh yeah, I think that's a robin, isn't it?" I said, "Well, I don't know. I don't know what a robin looks like." So I was photographing this bird, and then I saw she had a little twig in her mouth, and then I saw her go up to the tree, and she was building a nest, and I was just so fascinated by it. I thought, oh wow, and like for the next three or four days I was obsessed with photographing this bird and then I climbed up on the shed and I stuck my camera up and over the nest and I took a picture of these beautiful robin's blue eggs that I'd never really seen before. I just fell in love with that little bird. But that's what started my kind of whole obsession with birds and then I started paying attention to birds and noticing them and photographing them and so anyway, that leads me to, felt like cross-stitching, went to the craft store found a cross-stitching kit. So now, I hadn't done any in years, and then I went and worked on this one here. So, let me not spill all my stuff here. And this is the one that I started in July and finished at, right before Christmas. And I actually had it framed. So you've probably seen this one before. It's a kit by Dimensions called, I think it's called A Season of Birds. Bird seasons or season of the birds. I know there's a couple variations of that one out there. If you look at that, you can see. I've never seen that one before. And I, sorry, <laughs> sorry for the glare. I'm sitting on my deck right now. So, anyway, it was, it was one of those projects that I just really just got me back into cross stitching it, and I absolutely loved it. Um, and. It was before I had found any forums or anything. I was where I worked on one project, and it was it. And I worked on it when I felt like cross-stitching, and I worked on it. And so I started it in July, finished it in December, had it framed, 
I have never had anything else spray again, and this is the only cross stitch I have hanging in my house right now. And of all the ones that I've done, this one is still my favorite, and I don't know why. I think it's my favorite just because of just how much I enjoy doing it. I don't know. I don't really know. I do know that this part right here, uh, where am I at? Backwards here. Okay, this. All this green area, I remember, I had done all the leaves in the wrong color green. And I remember having to unstitch it, had to frog it. And I remember at the time being so devastated by it because it was it just seemed like so much work. You now I can tell you since that time I've frogged many, many times and it, anymore I don't really try to let it get me down <laughs> because it's part of cross stitching. You frog, that's just what happens. So but I've learned a lot since then, and I check my work. I check my work very, very frequently. So anymore when I frog, I don't usually have to frog very much at a time because I'm always counting, double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking. Because once you frog a lot, you don't really want to do it again. And it's just a big waste of time. So I'm very, very careful with my frogging, with not having to frog. So that's that. Love that one. Okay. Now, these aren't really going to be any particular order because I just have them all stacked up. I was going to do, hmm, should I do my smalls? Should I do my bigs? Should I do Halloween stuff? But they're all just in a pile. I'm just going to grab them as I do them in no particular order. Okay, so uh, let's start. Okay, well, let's just start. We'll just start with the small ones. This is another kit that I picked up. Uh, you've probably seen that before at the craft store where, if, you know, when you look at it, you think the whole thing's cross stitch, but then when you realize and look closely, it's not. It's just this centerpiece. So I'm going to give you a close up of that. Right there, without the glare. You can see it's just a little small, little center, but you know, I, I kind of think it's neat. So yeah, I, I guess I do have this displayed in my house too. So the other one isn't the only one, but this one, it's just, you frame it on the back and you I put it on a little stand and it's really cute. Um, so there's that one. I do kits. I'm sorry, cross stitching kits. I am a kit person, but I will stitch anything. As a matter of fact, I will stitch kits, I will stitch patterns, I will stitch, you know. Um, oh, example. I'll even do, um, let me do that here. Well, Where is that? Well, oh yeah, here it is. This is the one. I just recently did this. It's a stamped cross stitch. And I think that this is so cute, but it's really, I don't enjoy doing stamped ones, but you got to look at this one. Though. This is really cute. Have you seen that? I haven't uh, done anything with it. This is like literally hot off the press. I just finished this maybe last week. If you look really close, you know, you can see. It's got some satin stitching right up here. Um, these letters. Look, I don't have a lot of skill when it comes to satin stitching, but I just decided to try my hand at it because it's really cute. So the outline of the cups and here, as you can see, um, are printed on. It's like printed fabric. So, um, and oh, and I had to do this stem stitching on these little, you know, the vapors from the steam from the, the coffee. And I started out not doing too well, but as I got to the end, I was getting a little better at it. So they look okay. I figure if anybody's gonna, you know, look close at my work to see if anything's wrong with it, then they deserve to see what they see, right? So anyway, back here it looks really good. But I just love that and I do live my life by that. I'm a coffee drinker big time. Anyway. Stamped cross stitch that I thought was cute. Okay, so let's just do some mini. Let's do some Christmas ones. Now, this was one I just did not too long ago. Just got this from a magazine, and I think I was just using up some spare fabric I had, and he's just cute. I don't know. I'm going to probably turn him into a, an ornament. He ended up being kind of big for an ornament, so I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Um, let's see. I don't finish finish. I don't finish a lot of my finishes because um, every time I get to that part, I just kind of get burned out and want to move on to more stitching. So a lot of my projects are in a box, and I'll, but I have finished a few. 
So I've made a couple of mill hill ornaments for my boys. There's one that I did that I think turned out really cute. A little popcorn it says with a little star and the little beads. That's cute. I did that for my older son for one Christmas. And at that same Christmas, I did this one for my other son. I let them pick out which ones they wanted. So there's this little guy here, which I think is he's just cute with his little dangly legs. I think that's just a little elf with feet. Cute. They do hang on the tree. I had to go dig those out of the shed. And around that time, because I was kind of going on a Mill Hill obsession, I did make this one for myself. And I haven't put a little hanger on it to hang it on the tree yet. But that one's cute with the beads. You can kind of see all the little beads. I think Mill Hill designs, if you've never done one, they're a great introduction into beading, because I'd never done any beading before I did this. And they're easy, and they are way cuter in real life than they look on their pictures. I can tell you that. I'm always impressed with them. Um, Actually, keeping on the theme of Mill Hill, I'll just show you the bigger Mill Hills I did. So, this one, I did this little hummingbird, and she is just full of sparkles. It doesn't really do it justice, but you can see. Now, this one, a lot of the background really didn't require to be stitched, but I ended up stitching the whole thing, because I, I think it looks better than the paper. I'm not a big fan of stitching on perforated paper. I think if I ever do a Mill Hill again, um, I'll probably just do it on fabric. I think it looks better, but I did do this one too, this Halloween. And you can see this one, the background hasn't been completely filled in, so there's a lot of that paper left around. And I don't know, it's really cute, but I, I don't really like the look of the paper. I just think that you can see, once again, the sparklies on that. And this one is special because it has glow-in-the-dark thread, so actually um, the ghost and some of the clouds, they glow in the dark. But Nobody really is ever up at night to see it in the dark, so it's kind of one of those things that's just cute to try, but <laughs> it doesn't really have a lot of use, I don't think. But it's cute. Yeah. Okay, back to the Christmas ornaments. So I made this one. Um, these were from a magazine. I don't remember which one, but I made these little pillows for my, my boys last Christmas. They're just really cute, these little cushions. So I just do a little braid. Yes, I actually made that twisted cord myself using a video. Really easy and fun to do. If you haven't tried that, there's lots of videos on how to do that out there. So one son wanted his in a puffy pillow and the other one wanted his with a, as a flat ornament, which I did. They're not really great at finishing these. I mean, yeah, they're, they're cute, but if you look really close, you'll see my you know, sometimes it gets, you can see the glue and stuff on there, but I just thought those were the cutest little ornaments. I think I changed the color to match my son's favorite color. He likes purple, so I did purple. I think it called for blue. Um, let's see here. Keep track of these. Uh, this is another freebie from the magazine that I did and finished it. And then I just did a little stitching of 2012 in the back there, just hand stitch, but that was cute. I have that hanging on my tree too. And then this was the first time I ever did a flat ornament. Now this is from Little House Needleworks. This is the first time I was ever tried one of her designs. Look, and you will see I've done more of hers. So this is just, I was practicing, I did my twisted cord and did, I can't, I'm sorry I can't remember the name of this. I'm sure if you do a search for Little House Needleworks though, it's one of her more popular designs. I think it's very cute. I just did a kind of a coordinating backing fabric on it. So, um, found a tutorial online. I think um, who has good tutorials is the Twisted Stitcher is her name. And if you do a search for her, I could try and find her link. But uh, she's got some great tutorials for this kind of stuff. This one is so cute. I love it because I just love Halloween so much. It's this little scissor fob I made. Now this design was free online. I can't remember, once again, I'm sorry I don't remember the name of this person, but she has a cat and like, she's got like a St. Patrick's Day kitty and a, uh, different themes, but, and they're free. If you look online, do a, a search 
if, if anybody wants any of these links, if you can't find them just doing a Google search, I mean, I think they're easy to find because I found them. If you do a search for free cat Halloween cross stitch, you'll probably come up with this. But I put a little charm on it there too. You can see made with love. I got a little hook on it there. So anyway, I think that's very cute. I love that. I was digging out through my stuff to see all my finished projects and I forgot completely about that one. So glad I found it in time for Halloween. Okay, so now let's get back to some other medium-sized projects. This one I did. This is a, another Dimensions kit, I believe. I could be a spokesperson for Dimensions kits. I've done so many of them, and I just love them. I mean, I mean that just looks like it pops off the page. I just am really impressed, and it was easy to stitch, but it's just really cute. And this I'm going to frame the picture of my two doggies that are no longer with me and um, I, butterflies just yellow butterflies remind me of them and uh, I, I bought a frame that's got the three slots in it and I'm going to put this in one and then put both of my doggies and maybe I'll insert a picture if you want to see my little doggies I'll put one in here um, but I don't have any pets this one reminds me of my puppies, so I'm going to get them that framed one of these days. Okay, and back because of the robin I told you about, I just saw this and I had to stitch this. This is another Dimensions kit. It's called Robin's Nest, I believe. Let me get that up here. The rebirth of nature awakens all of the senses. Absolutely love this one. I'm going to frame it or something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I always have this intention to not get these framed because with my quilting background, I always think, oh, I'm going to make some, some fabric frames like I did with this one right here. It's like, I've got this little hanger. You can, you know, I think I have one of those little fancy hangers that you can hang it on. But this is a little dimensions kit that I did, or I don't know, it was like cross-stitching for dummies or something. You know, believe it or not, it's supposed to be a beginner's kit, but it was actually rather tedious, kind of, I don't know, it really wasn't that easy to do. But I thought it turned out really cute. Look that. One. So I always think, oh, I'm going to turn some of those other ones into some little wall hangings or do something with them. Okay. Here's another one I got out of a magazine that we did. Bird houses. I have an obsession with bird houses, and I have quite a few kits in my stash that revolve around bird feeders and bird stash, uh, bird houses. So uh, this one it was, I think, from Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine. And I had to have that when I saw it. I stitched it. It's cute. A lot of bird stuff. Called. There's one that has birds in it, but it's not a bird theme. Snowman and Friends, another Dimensions kit that I've done. Turned out cute. Out of all of the Dimensions kits I've done, this I think was the only one that I actually ran out of a color of thread. And I just called them and they sent me a whole bunch of it. So then I end up having a lot of it. Um, but it's the only one I've come up short on. And there's only one kit that came with a sort of subpar piece of fabric. It had a flaw in it and was kind of skewed. But other than that, and you know, anymore, I found that I, I don't really prefer stitching on 14 count Ada anymore. If I'm going to do Ada, I'm going to do 18 count. I just like it better. I like the smallness of it and that you can't see the holes as much. So. Uh, a lot of times now I've been kind of swapping out if they come if the kits come with 14 count I'll swap them out and I'm really trying to venture out into more hand dyed fabrics and more specialty fabrics I I don't really know where I fit with that I oh I forgot to show you on this you gotta look really close at this I just noticed it when I was looking to the side it's got fringe right here that you can see just little knots and little tassels on his scarf that I think are so cute. You just want to, you know, kind of just rub your finger over those and grab them. They're just really cute. I liked that little accent. So anyway, sorry. Um, here's an example of some 14 count Ada that like, I like the sparkly of this, but I don't like that you can see, you know, the holes are just so big on it. So this is another cross stitch I've done out of, I think, Cross Stitch and Needlework magazine. You can see it has the sparkles on it. And it's, he's really cute. But I just don't like it. 
holes are so noticeable on that. So, But I had some of that extra and I used it up on this one, which I just did. Actually, this was um, a cute little pattern that I stitched up. I haven't done anything with I was practicing with maybe doing something with fraying the end of it, so I was practicing down here. But this is cute. On a clear and starry night, Halloween is such a fright. Witches roam and goblins too, then home to bowls of pumpkin stew. I did some little embellishments on there. Okay, and here's an owl that I did. I can't remember the designer. This one, I know that you would know her probably know the designer because she does a lot of things that have this like an owl and then there's you know other owls inside of her owl themed things that make up the picture which is really cute um, another little bird that I got from a magazine I did as you can see I do practice doing things on linen and such and anything that's free that has a bird, I'll do. This is a card. I actually haven't assembled the card, but it was a card from a magazine, a free kit, that I think is just really cute. Okay, I'm sitting out on my deck, and it's really, I don't know why I have a jacket on. It's summer, and I, it was cloudy, so I thought it was cool, but it's actually not. So, on the theme of small birds, this one I just finished a couple days ago. I'm, I do know that because I just finished it, that this is from, this is a Valerie Pfeiffer design. So cute. I love, I love her designs, but they, once again, pretty, lots of confetti in those little flowers. I'm not sure I like confetti. <laughs> I like it and I don't like it. I think I don't like it in big amounts. It's kind of where I fall with that, I think. I get kind of in a grumpy mood when I have to do too much confetti. But then I also get very bored when I do too many stitches all of the same color. So, um, okay, I'll show you a couple more smalls and then a couple more big ones. Here's another. Um, this was a, oh, kind of a combo pack. Little House Needleworks, I believe. I could be wrong on these. I'll correct myself if I did that. But it was with um, Classic Color Works. So when you buy it, you get the, you, you get like the, the Classic Color Works thread, which used to be Crescent Colors, and the chart. And I bought two of those, actually. That one and this one. And it's my neighbor's dog over there. I think they just got a new puppy. Him yelping all the time. Oh, I don't think he likes to be ignored. Then I've got this one that I did, a dimensions kit. There's a whole set of those out there, and a friend of mine gave me two, and I stitched one. And I remember it was really difficult doing this holiday work because it needed to be couched. I didn't do a very good job at it, and I had to do it like three times, because um, I'm not really good at couching. Okay, here's some Halloween little minis I've done. This one was from Just Cross Stitch magazine last year, I believe, and I stitched it up, and he's really tiny and really tedious and cute. Let's see the detail in there. That was one, and I think out of that same, possibly that same magazine, I did this one. Little blue. And this one. I'm not much of a cat person. Sorry for all of those out there. There are a lot of you. It seems like cross-stitching and cats go hand in hand. And I am highly allergic to cats, so they're not my favorite, but I love stitching black cats in a Halloween theme. And I do love looking at all your cute kitties, and it really makes me want to have a pet. But I'm not a cat. I wouldn't be able to breathe if, I, if I'm around for too long. So there's this. I just 
love Halloween. It's my very, very favorite time of year, fall and Halloween. Um, okay, bouncing back to spring and baby birds, I did this one. Dimensions kit called Baby Blue Jays, which I just loved those little birds. And this stitch, this stitched up so quick. I mean, I think that Dimensions kits really are beautiful. I'm sorry for those of you that don't like them, but, and I know that there are a lot of you that do do kits, but I don't know, the forum that I'm on, I find that more people don't like kits, and they like to just have the ability to um, gather all the handmade stuff. Like, I would say, I can't imagine, say, Mrs. Milky Bar Kit, I can't imagine you ever really doing a kit, because you just, your knowledge of fabrics and fibers and floss and and patterns is just so great that, you know, I can imagine that doing a kit for somebody like you is probably very limiting. So, I don't have a lot of knowledge in that stuff. So, I'm learning, as you can see. I got some, I found this, this is a little house in works, and I actually got uh, the fabric that she called for for this, and ordered the, the fabric, the linen, and the hand-dyed floss for this. So, you can see, if you look, it's all very variegated. And you can see the texture in the barn, especially. You know, you can see how the threads just kind of irrigate the trees and the leaves there. You know, and I did love them. I, I really do like them a lot. But I also, in a way, they frustrated me because I found when I was stitching with them, like I was doing the barn, and I was too worried that the pattern in the irrigation was going to look too sort of um, pattern-like, like maybe it's going to end up being too stripey or too checkerboardy or something like that. And I know that you're supposed to do full crosses, complete each cross when you do it, but I found myself kind of, you know, going around the barn in different areas as I was approaching different areas of the floss, like, oh, this needs a dark spot, so I kind of would go over here on the barn, and, you know, I had to spend a lot of extra time thinking about where the floss was going to go when it was variegated like that, you know, hand-dyed, so I just have to be in the mood to use those. Sometimes it's just easier to do DMC thread that's one color and you don't really have to think about how it's going to change change the, the picture. Okay, this is another one. Another big finish that I just finished hot off the press and it's upside down. Butterfly Forest. This one's called By Dimensions. Surprise, surprise. And once again, it's got these beautiful butterflies. Lots of just beautiful detail. I love this. My husband picked this out for me. One time I was just kind of in a slump and wasn't really motivated to cross stitch, and so he said, Oh, he decided he would kind of spark my interest in cross stitching in by buying me a picking out and buying a colorful kit for me and, gifts and surprising me with it. And that was really special, so I really wanted to get this one completed. If you look really close, there's a gold thread. It goes all the way around the edge. One single gold thread that needs to be couched on. I got a little better at couching when I did this one. Looked a little better. So that one just really turned out nice. If I think somebody else might be doing this one. Um, but anyway, it's really worth it. I did this one. This is one that I swapped out. I think it called for 14 count, but I swapped it out with 18 count beta. And I think it ended up being a nice size for that. We're approaching the end here. Close to a couple more. Um, here's uh, a, a big one that I did. This, you may have recognized it before by Little House Neal Works called uh, Little Sheep Virtues. And I did, and it's big, so I'll just kind of show you the first three. Hope, Love, Peace. Courage, faith, simplicity. Sorry, I'm coping with my friendship, patience, wisdom, kindness, gratitude, joyfulness. So if I can stand back, this is how the whole thing looks from afar. So I definitely want to make some kind of a wall hanging out of that. Do something out it. And I also have all the buttons that go with it. I just haven't put them on yet. So, that one, I started it the, um, 
this was a stitch along. She released one a month, and I think it, it ended last December, and I got all of them for Christmas, and I stitched them. I was going to do one a year in 2014, and I ended up starting it in January, and I just went through and stitched until I got them all done. Like, I don't know, in March or April or something. They were just really fun, easy, cute stitches, and, you know, you just... I'm a, I'm a mood stitcher. I have to stitch what I'm in the mood for, and I was just in the mood to work on those, and so I did them until they were done. Um, oh, I think I only have one more. And this is one from a magazine. Another finish of mine. It's kind of wild. I, this right here is actually from Cross Stitch Needlework Magazine. It's a cute little owl that's actually a patchwork owl, so of course it's got my love of quilting and my love of owls and birds in there. And what I did, if you've never seen this before, I made a, a um, pillow. So I'll show you. you. Just get a pillow like this. It's one of those envelopes. I'll show you. you know, envelope fold pillows. I don't know if you can see, but you just take it. And just stuff the pillow down inside there. see it's just you know it's got that you know envelope hold to it and then there you go and I just had learned it to put these little tassels these little balls on here and make this cute little pillow and it has a little rick rack on the side there but yeah once again I kind of use my quilting skills to sorry I <laughs> keep going out of the make this cute pillow and I just love it. I just love it. He's so cushy and soft and yes, I don't care if he gets dirty because he's a pillow and he's meant to be used and loved and, and I just love it. I need to make another one too because it was so fun. Anyway, yes, so it's got the, I could probably put a little Velcro in the back there to keep that closed, but I think it just, it just needs to be down and pulled. It's not ironed. Anyway, so anyway, candy corn, backing, tassels. Cute. Okay, oh, you know, I was going to show this. This isn't really a cross stitch, but every once in a while I get in this embroidery mood and I, I just made this cute little thing embroidery. It's all as well. I was just practicing some embroidery stitches from a book I had. Every time I go to try to embroidery something, it, I go right back to cross stitching because I like cross stitching much more. It's just easier. Crosses are just easier to make than all those lazy daisy and stem stitches. And I like to delve in that once in a while, but I end up always going back to cross stitch. So I think. That about does all my finishes. Now, my next video I, I'll do, um, I'll show you my works in progresses, which I did do, uh, I did inevitably start a Heaven and Earth design, and I have a couple other Dimensions kits, of course, that I'm working on in progress, and I'm currently working on called um, Orchids and Hummingbirds right now, and it looks like I'm at 45 minutes, so I think I'm going to say goodbye, and thanks for watching. Uh, once again, I'm not a big commenter, I, but I watch all your videos. I love them. I've been very inspired by them all, and just I just really enjoy watching them, and I hope that um, those of you that watch this video will enjoy it, and um, subscribe if you feel like it, but I'll see you around at my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.